This is a tutorial about an important data science concept called multicollinearity. This is a situation when you, whether you're running a linear regression or you're doing marketing mix models, when you have two variables that trend very close together, they're highly correlated, and the model has trouble distinguishing where the effects are coming from because these two independent variables, these two predictors move so closely together. Just as an example, one of the biggest predictors of whether or not a child is going to go to college is their family wealth. But does it have to do with family income or your parents' education or your parents' connections? Because a lot of times, if you have wealthy parents, your parents might also have high education. And so because these two predictors tend to move together, it can be difficult to discern the relationships. Let's walk through some examples. So I generate data so we all know exactly the relationships going on. In this case, uh, I give students a grade, eight, a grade eight math score, and I have that the outcome, how they're gonna do on their SAT math is related to their grade eight math score uh, with a true beta coefficient of 0.6 plus some random noise. I also have that there is a grade seven math score that is highly related to the grade eight math score. But importantly, in this case, remember we're just generating this example for it, uh, learning purposes. The SAT score is only a function of the eighth grade math score and the seventh grade math score does not affect its prediction at all. But the grade seven and the grade eight math are gonna be highly collinear. So I generate this data, I split it up into a train and test group and I look at them. Now, the first thing to notice is the grade seven and grade eight math scores are high, have high, are highly correlated, a correlation coefficient of 0.92. And the SAT math is actually correlated similarly with both the grade eight and the grade seven math. But as we know, correlation is not causation, right? So in this case, we have a defined relationship between the grade eight math score and no relationship between the grade seven, at least in terms of an actual predicted relationship. Or in this case, it was an actual like causal relationship. So if we run this linear regression with just math scores, SAT math scores only on the grade eight math scores, you can see that this coefficient 0.57, which is of course highly statistically significant, is very close to the true relationship of 0.6. And additionally, we can see uh, how well this predicts out of sample, looking at the root mean square error, uh, the closer to zero, the better. In this case, we have a 19.3. Just remember that for later for comparison purposes. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna now add the grade seven math score to the regression. And we see here now the coefficient on grade eight math fell to 0 0.46 and on grade seven, it's about 0.12. But remember, we know what the true relationship is, right? This coefficient should be 0 0.6 and this should be zero in the sense that that's what we defined. But in the face of multicollinearity, the model started to give some of the credit to the grade seven math score because they move so closely together, the, the model has trouble um, disentangling that relationship. But there are a couple of really interesting things to notice here. One, look what happens if you actually add up these two coefficients. They're really close to the true relationship of 0 0.6. So the model is recognizing how much comes from these math scores, but they're just splitting the credit among the grade eight and grade seven because of the multicollinearity. And now another thing to notice is that root mean square error or the prediction uh, error on the test sample, the out of sample uh, group, and it's actually the same. So even though we had this multicollinearity issue where it got some of the regression coefficients wrong, it's out of sample predictive power actually was the same. So while you do need to be careful about overfitting models, especially if you don't have a lot of N, you don't have a lot of observations and you start adding more and more uh, independent variables, you could start to overfit and then make your predictions worse. But, but if you were just trying to control for things, or let's say you have a clearly exogenous variable that you care about, such as an experiment treatment dummy, that is fine if you start having other um, independent variables that are in there to help soak up the variance, even if they are correlated, correlated with each other, importantly, not the indicator on the experiment variable. 
Now, keep in mind, we don't know the true relationship in the real world. And so you as a data scientist are going to have to make some decisions because let's look at a case now when these two highly correlated variables both do have a causal component. So in this case, rather than grade seven math, I toss in a grade eight verbal score and we're trying to predict your SAT math. And it turns out that your grade eight math is the most predictive, right? I mean, not turned out we're creating this uh, uh, specific relationships. So the grade eight math is going to be most of the relationship 0.6, but the verbal is going to play a role too. And in this case, so the SAT math is 0.6 times grade eight plus 0.1 times the, the verbal plus some random noise. So now when we run the regression only with grade eight math, we are actually missing an important variable. Uh, we'll have, in fact, we'll have omitted variable bias because in this case, the grade eight verbal score is both correlated with grade eight math and it's correlated with the outcome. So we end up with this bias result of 0.67. And in this case, an RMSC of 10.13. Don't compare it to the previous model because uh, I changed the simulated data. And now what happens if we are to add the grade eight verbal scores now? Remember, we know the true coefficients should be 0.6 and 0.1. And now when we include both math and verbal, they're pretty close to 0.6 and 0.1, or certainly much less biased. And the RMSC is about the same as with just the math score. And so what does this mean? You as a data scientist are going to have to think about what variables you are including in some of your regressions or in some of your other models, like a marketing mix model, but you're not going to know if you're in a situation where there is one causal variable and you're just adding in something that is non-causal, but correlated with the other variables, or if you're adding in two variables that both influence the outcome. So for example, let's say you are investing in marketing and you have two different channels that you're investing in. One does really well and the other does really poorly, but your investing spend in both of these channels moves together. Well, a model that is looking at both of these channels might give some of the credit to, from the good channel over to the bad channel, in which case you would end up overestimating the influence of the bad channel.